Okay, and I'm just going to test things out right here for a minute. <clears throat> Make sure that we are all up and running. Whoa, and we are getting some serious, serious uh, lag problems. So let's shut that down. See if we can straighten out the drop frame dish frames issue. We're just kind of monitoring that for right now. I want to make sure that that's kind of stable before we move forward with life. Yeah, it's not doing great, is it? All right. That seems to have settled down. Rave, thanks for joining us. I don't think... If this channel's set up right, then you can't... I mean, well, you can talk, but uh, it's not going to do anything. Because then I would interrupt, interrupt the show, which is... I mean, really, it's just bigger than you or me or the two of us combined. It's like a force of its own. <clears throat> okay, so the connection seems to have stabilized a little bit. So we are going to get started here in just a second. I am going to finish getting a couple of things set up. Good, that's coming through. I might have to grab some music here that we're going to need. Or um or we might just live live without it, but it just just took me it should just take me a second. <clears throat> I thought for sure that was in the playlist here, and so that kind of threw me off. Try one more thing. There it is. Okay.
Live from Kakariko. There we go. All right. I appreciate everybody's patience. We are getting ready to launch here. So we are going to get the recording going. Today, we pay tribute to the man on the Retro Zoo Super Show. Live from Kakariko Village. Greetings, everyone, one and all. This is the Retro Zoo Super Show, and we appreciate you being here. I am flying solo today. Um, Steven ended up being a little bit late. And by late, I mean he's three hours away. So we are going to roll on without him. But um, today is today is a very special episode. Um, one of my personal heroes has passed away this week. And of course, we are talking about uh, Stan Lee, the great comic book creator and um, and just icon, really an icon in in the industry. And um, and so if you are not aware of Stan Lee's, um, you know, contribution to comic books, you you are aware of them. You just probably don't realize uh, realize who it is. So Stan Lee was um, was was 95 when he died, and he was uh, he was a writer um, back in what they call the kind of the golden age of comic books. This is you know uh, you know straight out of World War II in in starting into the 60s, and um, and. The, the way he told it uh, uh, over and over again was that he got he got frustrated with how juvenile just how juvenile those comics were and if you um, if you have if you have checked out uh, the uh, kind of golden age comic books they are they are they're they're very geared towards children very much so and um, and and so he uh, he was very frustrated with his job, you know, wanted to wanted to quit, wanted to do something else, wanted to write, like really write uh, is, is how we would normally put it. And um, and his uh, and his wife said, well, you know, look, if you're going to quit anyways, why don't you write? Why don't you write a comic book the way you would want to write it? And if they fire you, so what? You're going to quit anyway. And so what what resulted from that was Fantastic Four number one, and there's um, there's you know all kinds of disputes in, in the time period on who did what and who launched what, but um, it's safe to say that uh, that that Stan Lee's influence in moving the comic books into the Silver Age um, really uh, it, it's hard to overstate it. And and so in the next few years he would uh, who co-create 
several uh, several heroes, several teams that we know and love today. Uh, Fantastic Four, created with Jack Kirby. Um, Iron Man, I think it was Kirby as well. Uh, Thor. Um, Spider-Man with Steve Ditko. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, Doc Strange. It was mostly, mostly Ditko's work. Um, the Avengers themselves, the X-Men. Uh, just, and, and just... All of these, basically, basically the Marvel heroes that we're seeing in the theater. There's a reason Stan Lee is appearing in all of these movies, and 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 most of these heroes that we know and love from Marvel uh, come from some shape or fashion from from him uh, teamed up with Jack Kirby, with him teamed up with Steve Ditko, with with just in that incredible environment in uh in the 60s that were just churning out these incredible heroes um and these incredible stories uh captain america had been created uh co-created by jack kirby earlier uh, you know, it was co- really coming out of world war ii um stan lee's contribution to cap was was kind of that the whole the whole f- you know frozen in ice plot um, that that's depicted in the films and that brings Captain America into the modern age um, was was Stan and and so you know even even the great Marvel hero that he didn't create he he contributed a lot to that and um, and so he very very rightfully earned a cameo and in all of these Marvel movies, you know, he, he is, uh, he is just the, the ever present cameo in every single one. Um, and, and that is very well deserved. And even more than that, he's been, he, he has been, I, it, I, he, yeah, okay. I want to, I want to say mascot. Uh, and, and that has, that, that seems like, that seems like a little bit of a derogatory term and I don't mean it to be. He, he's he's been he's been a cheerleader for the comic book industry as a whole and he has he's been an advocate for the comic book industry as a whole um and he's been a very very good one um you know so many of these just outright geniuses you know we don't that I, so many of them kind of <laughs> shelter themselves away, and um, and and don't you know don't don't really have a, a public presence. But but Stan Lee was uh, until only the last few years. I mean, well into his 90s, was at at the conventions, you know, uh, uh, taking pictures, answering questions, and. And just and just had this kind of winning charm and personality that that really touched the people he met. And I'm I'm very sorry that to say that um, that I I never did get to meet him. Um, he's been a hero of mine for a very long time, and um, and I wish I had. But um, you know, so many of these so many of these greats, uh, I, it it feels like it feels like we're 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 losing. And there's, that's very rightfully so. I mean, cause, you know, it's like I, I have friends who like, you know, talk about like all the rock stars that are dying. As so, well, well, rock and roll started in the 50s and 60s. All the people who were, you know, 25 then are like in their 70s and 80s now. You know, it's not. I mean, this isn't hard math. And it's the same thing. It's the same thing with with com- with comic books. So you know the really the the first big pushes of, of comic book creation in that golden age, or was 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 starting. You know, way back in the '40s and the '50s, and then really hitting its stride in the Silver Age um, and growing up a little bit in uh, in the '60s and into the '70s, and um, and. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's that time. I mean, it's that we're, we're at that period now where, you know, we, we've, we've had the pleasure of seeing a, a, a whole genre 
you know, first, first of all, born and then, and it come into its own and then excel and, and grow beyond anybody's wildest imagination. I mean, just in, in a single lifetime and, um, and as people who, you know, have, we're, we're born close enough to the founding of this, of this, this entire genre, this entire industry, um, to be able to meet some of the greats in that, in that genre, we're, um, we're, we're also going to see them, them depart from us. And, um, and I'm not, I'm not one that normally gets into like, you know, celebrity deaths and stuff, but I think that I think that Stan Lee made a big enough impact on all of what I call like nerd culture, right? Um, that that I, I, I think I think we'd be remiss to not to not note note his passing. Um. So, one 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 thing that's been that's interested me for a while is is this idea that. You know, it, in the last in the last couple of generations, that same sort of nerd culture has gone from being, you know, a, a, a reason to to mock someone to mainstream. And like, you know, and I I, I think I noticed this most of all when I when uh, you know Spider Man Homecoming. Came out, and the character of Flash, which which was a really fascinating character. I, you know, I, <laughs> I I have a particular soft spot in my heart for Spider-Man comics, especially really early Spider-Man comics. The um and and we're, we'll have to touch on we'll have to touch on how great those were in 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 a minute. But it, you know, I, Flash was like us originally like this this jock. Who just didn't have time for dorks, okay? And so he'd go after Peter because Peter was a dork. And and I noted like when I saw when I saw Homecoming that um, Flash is now a dork. <laughs> you know, it is like and and their rivalry is not Jock versus Nerd anymore. Their rivalry now is jealousy over over like the same the same areas of life you know they're both in the same science magnet program it is and it's a jealousy there um that's a remarkable change that's a remarkable change in our culture and 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 i do think that it that it's it it comes back to really a handful of the great visionaries who who were able to to translate you know what 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 we as nerds were seeing in our heads into something visual so that it could be understood by somebody who wasn't tied in you know and and when i when i'm talking about these visionaries it's like i, I you know I, what, what i mean is like is like Gary Gygax, who who like systematized these 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 war games that we were constantly playing in in our heads when we we're reading Conan or or any of the pulps, um, systematized that and let us sit down and play it. Um, the 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 visionaries of of the comic book world who who were were able to take these characters, you know. Stuff that the stuff that we talked about, and stuff that is old as old as time, you know. I mean, like, like when we going back to to like Hercules, not Hercules the comic book character, but Hercules in mythology. We were talking about, you know, uh, a, a, a warrior with superpowers, right? And and that's what what all of that is, and 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 the the nerds have just kind of kept playing these stories in our heads and and those visionaries were able to bring it to the page people like jack kirby um 
the grandmaster of them all. I mean, the 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 final shot in the war between the nerds and the jocks was May of 1977 when Star Wars came out. Because there had been science fiction films before, but not like that. There, no one had seen anything like that. And 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 like like all the normal people um, were able to go to the theater and suddenly realize, oh, that's what you know, whatever dork that that existed with them is talking about. That's really cool. Um, and so, so I I I think that that people like this. Um, we're able to bring, you know, the the the, the thoughts and dreams of uh, a, a small subset of the of the of the population, and and show it to people, and say this this is this is what we're talking about. Here, take a look. Um, kind of the last element of that, I think, has been has been the video games and the the just explosion of of video games you know um going you know going back to to the arcades to to atari um into into everything that's come since and how far that's come in a remarkably short period of time and that's something that's happened like you know i i don't know the birth of comic books i'm i, I you know i wasn't around for that but i've seen most of the history of video games you know and how far that's come from you know like like you know some text base uh whatever um uh, you know on on a mainframe somewhere into you know fallout uh 76 or 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 the new spider-man game which would be a great example because you know goodness we've been having spider-man games for so long and um and, and then something comes, you know, something like this comes out, which I, which I haven't played, you know, I, for those who listen to the show, of course, I am, I am absolutely notorious for being two generations behind on every console. So I haven't played it yet, but you know, people, you know, people throwing around the term, like terms of game of the year for Spider-Man uh, is, um, is, is pretty neat. Um, you know, the, the, these are the people and these are the things that have brought, you know, stuff that was, that was even that even into seventies, even into the eighties where we're still kind of considered a little bit fringe to, you know, um, infinity war, right? I mean, one of the biggest movies in the history of the world one of the biggest movies in the history of the world um, based on comic books that in my, in my lifetime were, were considered childish and were considered, you know, not worthy of, of our attention. And so that, you know, that, that sort of change is what we, Oh, um, what we owe to, to people like Stanley. Um, and I think that, I think that change has, has been for the better. I, I think, um, I, I think he, he just, he deserves our respect and, and our thanks for that. Um, I also think it's really, really cool that he was able to live to see like this Spider-Man game, you know, and we're getting into like, you know, I mean, it's like, you know, we were never able to pull together a Spider-Man movie for most of my life, I think. Um, and then, and now we're on our third set of Spider-Man movies and not all of them have been good, <laughs> but, but being able to see Spider-Man, you know, um, fight alongside of the Avengers, 
is uh, is is very neat and and not something that I don't think uh, really many of us expected to see happen in in our lifetimes and um, and and I think that I think that is uh, that's really neat and uh, and and very much worth um, you know we're kind of worth thinking about. It's like you, all of this stuff is so much still in its infancy. I mean, do we? We get that. I mean, it's like the novel has gone through so many different phases and so many different, you know, different styles and and, it, and that sort of thing. And in comic books have like had three main generations, right? You know, it's like video games are still as much massive progress as they've come are are still essentially as a genre in its infancy um you know it's like i mean we we've had we've had like 120 years of film you know and after 120 years we're now seeing stuff like avengers fin infinity war all right we have had 40 years of 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 uh, video games the 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 craziness that's going to come the craziness that's going to come uh has only just is only beginning and 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 it makes me wonder you know who those people are now who are those people are now like the stanleys that um that are going to are going to completely transform things again uh, but back, back, back to what I'm saying, you know, the, the fact that he was able to, that he lived to see all of this, I'm, I'm, is something that makes me extremely happy because you look at people like, I mean, uh, Steve Dicko was just, just very recently passed away and it was very cool that he, he went as long as he did, but people like Jack Kirby, you know, saw so much, you know, saw so much growth in in his medium um that he didn't get to see he didn't get to see uh you know the stuff that that i mean that that's just that's still blowing our minds even this year um and and so i'm i, I am thrilled that uh that 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 stan uh stan made it as long as he did um and that he he was able to to be with us so long um so uh I know I know we have um we do have a call. I um oh yeah, I, I, I really do have to take this. This is um this is Phil. Hold on. Hey hey Phil. Hey, hey, hey Kai, yeah, this is Phil from Phil's Gaming Emporium dot com. Hey, yeah, Phil I know, look, I know we had uh, planned a planned a commercial today, but um you know, we're doing the whole the whole Stanley thing. Yeah, the Stanley tribute. No, no. It's completely inappropriate to advertise video games when when we're mourning the passing of such the, of of one of the greats. It's truly one of the greats. Oh, well well thanks. I you know what I I appreciate that. You know that. No, that's that's cool of you. So we'll just we'll just postpone the the um the thing till uh till next week. Yeah. No, that's good. I, I you know I just wanted to call and I wanted to you know like I wanted to I wanted to contribute a little bit. Oh well, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. You do you have some uh, some memories or anything of of Stan Ling? Well, yeah. Um. Yeah. Actually. Uh. Yeah. I. I. I I've been to a few a few of the conventions, you know, doing you know, I had a booth there and, and stuff and um I you know, cuz I was always tied down at the booth. I never got to meet him, but but you know, I would I would very often get to see him see him walk by and and you know, he was always he was always very gracious with people and I would like yell at him. I would like, "Stan! Stan! Uh, can can you quiet down a little bit or, you know, that's really loud." Oh well, that was just yeah, that was just an example. But yeah, I would I would try to get his attention, and and I don't think he ever heard me. Um, but I I saw him being very nice to other people. Well, I, well, I mean that that's really cool. Yeah, I I you know I actually we and I can't remember. I think it was a Halloween um once. Uh, I can't remember if it was a Halloween or if just me and some of the college buddies decided to dress up. But uh, we had a comic book theme. And, um, and I dressed up as Stanley 
and and I ended up kind of being um, the narrator. <laughs> announcer of everything we were doing because I was Stan Lee. And I saw, I immediately, I was supposed to be introducing everybody in like, uh, to some friends, you know, like we, we had gone and seen some friends and I was like going to do this like big presentation introducing them. But instead I did a whole speech about the creation of Spider-Man while they were waiting. And, um, and it was absolutely hilarious. Yeah, that sounds like a that sounds like a very stand thing to do. Well, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, so um, so yeah, it's uh, that was a lot of fun, and uh, you know, that's <laughs> that's kind of the influence he's had on me. It's like I, uh, you know, the first thing I think of when it's like, hey, dress up like a superhero, and uh, my mind immediately goes to Stan Lee. Now, granted, a lot of it was just, um, you know, that that was a cheap costume. I just um, I grew a mustache and or glasses. Oh, I did have a little like gray, like graying, graying for the hair. Uh, cause I was in college at the time and, and all, uh, but yeah, so. Okay. Well that story kind of went off the rails a little bit. Uh, look, I'm sorry. I, you know, just reminiscing a little bit. Well, I was just going to mention, I was going to mention one thing, you know, it's just incredible. The man lived to be 95 years old and and i i kind of wanted to do a tribute to that a tribute what what kind of tribute well no i was just thinking that you know there's so many like marvel games and there have been so many great titles over the years that that uh that i would you know because stan lee was was 95 i would i would offer up all these games from the website phil's gaming emporium.com phil no please stop doing that no phil's gaming emporium dot dot com it's going to be 95 percent on do you mean 95 percent off no that's ridiculous i won't make any profit at all no it's like five percent off 95 percent on okay phil we're gonna hang up now phil's gaming emporium dot okay that's it that Okay. Uh, we are going to jump to the break. I, you know, I, I, I like I was telling Phil, I, I really don't feel like, um, uh, you know, playing any commercials today. So we're going to, we're going to play, uh, we're going to play some, uh, just a little bit of music and, and then we will be right back. Okay, guys, bear with me. Just I forgot to actually turn the red light on uh, at the beginning to warn people who might be coming in that I'm not looking at chat at all. But we didn't have any chat because I think y'all know already. So uh, we're going to go ahead and um, and cut back on. And we are back. Okay, so uh, yeah, yeah, so we're not gonna we're not going to to tackle a lot today. Um, I did want to mention one thing, uh, one more thing about Stanley and kind of his influence on my life, and um, and that's that's his enthusiasm. You know, it's like I I, I it, when when we were preparing to start this show. I, I listen to a lot of podcasts and um, and just kind of take took mental notes on them and and tried to figure out where we were going to fit in all of this thing. And um, th it was quite often that I was coming across shows that that I, I think felt the need to to put down games at least in some way shape or form you know even if even if it was like you know well i do like this game but and then list a whole a whole slew of stuff um that's wrong with it and a lot of times i agreed a lot of times i agreed with them but i i just i did not i did not have the desire to do that i was i was listening to one um back then and, uh, and it's certainly not all, all of the podcasts, you know, and I'm, I'm not going to name names because, you know, what's the point? Um, but it was, one was talking about 
uh, Final Fantasy IV, and um, and you know, it was this kind of that same thing. It's like, well, I really enjoyed this game, but the story's terrible, and the um, and the battles are terrible, and uh, you know, everything is so cliche, so cliche, and on and on and on and on and on. And I, um, I I don't disagree with that. You know, it's like I mean, in Final Fantasy IV, is like my favorite. <laughs> possibly my favorite game ever and i don't disagree that it's cliche it's cr- cliche but who cares I, and that was, I mean that was my my first reaction is who cares if it if it's fun who cares and um and, and i and i realized i realized that you know this was the, the kind of approach that i wanted and the kind of approach i really liked was that that sort of enthusiasm that people like Stan Lee bring and, and it's, and it's not considered serious critic, you know, it's not considered serious gaming criticism or, uh, you know, gaming journalism or whatever to say, to, to do that. It's not considered, um, you, you know, uh, it's like if you, if you want to be considered thoughtful and serious, then you have to complain a lot about, old games and you know constantly be um be qualifying what you say with you know um you know for the time and you know well it's still very stereotypical in this way and i just you know i don't see the point if i'm going to sit here and i'm going to talk about retro games every week it's it better be because i like it it better be because i like them because otherwise, this could get really, really old, really, really fast, and it, that's you know, and and obviously, this is something I do like, and this is something I I do want, I, I do enjoy playing, and yeah, Final Fantasy IV is full of cliches, and I don't really care; it's fun, and so there's I, there's been a lot of times like I'd, I'd close an episode, and and. And, and and just kind of fall into that that thing that you know that that um, th- that assumption that we make that uh, people who are going to talk seriously about video games need to be serious about them and seriously criticize them in certain ways, shape, or forms. And I and I'll finish an episode and um, and just think to myself like, dang, I did a glowing review of that game, and you know people are going to think that I just like every single game out there, and um, and mostly I do, you know. Mostly I do. I mean, we've reviewed games on here that I don't like, but mostly I like them. And mostly I have a lot of fun with them. And and I really don't see the point in playing them if, if I don't. So, I mean, there are games that I, I don't like, um, but the, I think they're pretty probably few and far between. I, I generally like them, and that's why I'm here. And I get that. I mean, I and I and I'm getting that from from Stan. I mean, it, you know, and 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 there are others like him, but you know, just that enthusiasm for what he does. You know, when he talked about the comics, and he talked about the movies, he he, he made you feel like they were very important. He made you feel like he loves them as much as you do. And that's okay. And that's, and that's, that's probably a good thing that you do because they're worthwhile, you know? And when he talked to the fans, he made the fans feel worthwhile, you know? And he shared that bond with them, you know? And it's, um, I, I, and I just, look, just go on Twitter, go on Twitter and go, go, go find like writers and ce- and actors and celebrities and go and like, if they're interacting, uh, you know, it's like a lot of these, a lot of the, the like Twitter things are just run by, you know, media companies or whatever, but it, go to some of them that are run themselves and see how they like talk to fans, you know, and, um, and just see how rare that is that that people um you know these people are being approached by by stan lee himself with that same sort of enthusiasm that um you know it's, it's that bond that that brought a lot of us together in the first place 
that idea that, you know, kind of, wait, 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 <laughs> you, you like this stuff too? And that, you know, that, that moment in meeting someone where you, you, you have that realization that you share something with that person, something, um, something important to you, something that's, that's close to your heart. Uh, and, 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 and you, and you're just able to start talking about it. Um, you know, that, that sort of enthusiasm is, is something that I saw in Stan and, um, and I see in, in some of the, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the, the creators that I, I like the best, you know, that it's, you know, a, a lot of times, yes, this is a job. This, this is something that we are doing that, you know, puts, puts, uh, uh, bread on the table, uh, puts money in the bank, but it's also something we do because we really, really love it. And, um, and, and so that, that's, that's kind of what made, made me decide that this, that this podcast, that gaming music, um, that, I mean, all the, the stuff that we're doing, all the stuff that we're, that we're involved in, that we're, we're, we're digging into the, the, the composing, the writing, the, um, uh, you know, videos, Twitch, the podcast, that these are things that we love and, and things that we want to share and things that we want to share with you. Um, that's the kind of enthusiasm that got me reading Stan Lee's stuff forever. You know, and a lot of that stuff is at the very beginning of the Silver Age. And, you know, it's it's not that Stan Lee took the genre from small kids to middle-aged adults overnight. He he made he took it from small kids to um also young teenagers and then it grew from there you know and so there's a lot of stuff in his comics uh early on that are uh that are very very that, that still still have that kind of childish ring to them and and still some of the trappings of the golden age that were not my favorite i'm not a huge fan of the golden age i mean the the innovations there were incredible some of the art in there was incredible the story's just not getting me um but uh, and so there's there's a lot there's a lot of that stuff still there, um, but it was growing, and so the pleasure I get and in reading Stanley stories is you just you have his voice there, you know. It's like you can hear him telling you this story, and you can hear the excitement in his voice when he's telling you, and, and now the Hulk's gonna do this, and. Um, um, it's so, yeah, you know, a lot of it is, is still very, very childish, but it, it is that, that sort of love for these characters, that sort of love for the genre and that sort of love for, 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 for superheroes and what they represent that, um, that's critical. Um, last thing is Spider-Man. And, you know, Spider-Man always seemed to be Stan's favorite. Um, and I can see why, you know, he's, Spider-Man is not my favorite superhero. Uh, my, my favorite superhero is Captain America. And my favorite team is Fantastic Four. Uh, so imagine my disappointment. Well, first of all, imagine my elation between Winter Soldier and Civil War going to the theater and it's like, yes, y'all are nailing it. And then my my great disappointment every single time they say they're going to do Fantastic Four for the film, uh, for film. Um, so but Spider-Man is not my favorite, but I, I there is something there is something in Spider-Man that's just not in, in many other places, you know, Um uh, the way Stan always told the story is that, you know, his publisher was hesitant to run Spider-Man because, you know, superheroes were adults and, and sidekicks were the teenagers. And so they, they threw, um, 
they threw the first Spider-Man story into a uh, a, a title um, that was uh, that was going under, and you know, and just like okay, we'll just do it there, and it just and it and it did quite well, and so we have Spider-Man, but Spider-Man, Spider-Man's special because of all the mess that happens to him. Spider-Man started off as as a teenager, as an awkward teenager in the in the heart of the, you know, j- jocks versus nerd battle. And he had trouble connecting with people and he had um you know, uh trouble at home and he was bullied and he was an outright dork and then he became spider-man and all of those problems like intensified by 10 and so he was even more of a dork and he had a harder time connecting with people and he had more family problems because of his death of his uncle and his if read the, i mean goodness read the early spider-man aunt may's like real like her her cognitive ability slipping very rapidly in those comics and and he's trying to hold all of this together while while like though the words from his uncle are like haunting him the 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 with great power comes great responsibility words are haunting him and pushing him beyond what what anyone should be forced to do and through more trials than anyone has been forced to do and and I, you know, it's like, I, so like, I don't know if y'all have seen these, but they're, they're, okay. So Marvel has published these, um, big volumes, black and white, uh, you know, like, um, I think they're called like the essential, whatever, the essential X-Men, essential Spider-Man. And, and they each, each book has like 25 comics in it. So it's like, it's just like an archive thing. So it's not in color, but you get 25 issues and they're like 15 bucks. Something like that, uh, you know, whatever, whatever the, the current price is, but, um, so I get like six of these from Spider-Man and they are depressing the heck out of me as I'm reading through them. And I finally halfway through had to put it up for a little bit and like read something else because Peter Parker is forced to go through so much, so many trials, so much heartbreak, so much loss, more than anyone else. They put that, that kid through the ringer and he comes out the other side. Um, and, and as somebody who was that awkward kid in high school, you know, and as somebody who had trouble connecting with people for a large portion of my life, um, watching Spidey, conquer it time after time it never got any better for him (laughs) it never got any better for him but he kept getting up um it was downright inspirational and uh and you know uh, some of the letters that stan has gotten because of spider-man comics as has uh have been very famous you know, the whole controversy that that broke the Comic Code Authority um, for the first time uh, is in there. I won't go through it again. Uh, it's, a, it's a great story. It's a great story. And, um, you know, for those who haven't heard Stan talk a lot, there's 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 only a few stories he tells and he tells them over and over again, but they're worth listening to. He's such a great storyteller. Um, but I think that I think that spoke to a lot of people. Um and I think that, that, you know, a lot of us are better because of it. And I think a lot of us have made lifelong connection with people because of, you know, going over to somebody's house and seeing Spider-Man comics there. You love this stuff too. At the end of the day, uh, Stan did a lot for us. And um, I think that he, 
I think that he, uh, with, with his incredible team at Marvel, um, helped change pop culture and help, you know, spark the imagination of now more than one generation and thought uh, it ca- uh, caused us to to think think bigger to um to kind of turn our eyes uh, turn our eyes up to the stars and wonder and um and to kind of think of those uh, those 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 bigger issues of you know what, what is what is heroism what is what are heroes what Know what? Going back to Spider Man a little bit, I have some power. So, what responsibilities does that give me? So, um, I, uh, I, I do hope uh, I, I hope that that uh, y'all have have gotten to uh, hear, you know, hear Stan tell stories. Sometimes I, I hope that y'all have gotten to read some of his stuff. Um, I, I hope that. That you'd look look more into uh, into his life. He he lived a, he lived an incredible incredible life, and um, and and I I've been greatly affected by it. So, um, to make a long story shorter, uh, thank you, Stanley, and um, I, I I greatly appreciate uh, everything that that you have done in my life through your writing. And I guarantee you, I would not be sitting here if it weren't for people like Stan Lee, like Steve Ditko, like Jack Kirby, like uh, George Lucas, um, like Miyamoto, um, like Tolkien, the generation before him. You know, these, these are, these are the people who, 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 who caused us to imagine greater. And, uh, and so, um, we're losing, we're losing these people too quickly and, uh, Stan, you will be missed. Thank you all for joining, joining me today. We are going to do a little bit of things, to, you know, a little housekeeping at the end here. We're going to do things a little bit differently, uh, this, uh, this holiday season. Stephen is um, has has started his Christmas Christmas job, and so next week we hope to have a guest with. Uh, actually, not next week. Sorry, uh, next week is Thanksgiving week. We will we'll take the week off. I am. Um, we we did our we did our first year without missing a single week, and that was a little much. I I, I that was hard. And so, um, we're not going to take, we're not going to take, you know, massive time off, uh, anytime soon or anything like that. But here and there, we are going to take weeks off to, um, take a breather and Thanksgiving is a good time for that. And so we will be off next week. The week after that, I hope to have a guest with me and then we're going to have a special series over Christmas that, uh, is going to be a lot of fun and you're not going to want to miss it. And so please do tune in, um, to keep up to date on all of this and also to check out live recordings of the show, uh, check out our discord link down in the show notes. We do have a, a, a discord server that, um, that we're trying to build up and, and hopefully making a lot of fun. So do, do check that out. And otherwise y'all have a wonderful Thanksgiving and we will catch you another time. Okay, and we are not recording anymore. I'm going to let the song play, though, because I like it. Hey, Rave. Oh, let me turn the red light off. I went to all that trouble to make this red light, and, uh, and I don't use it properly. So yeah, Stephen. Uh, 
Steven is coming over for a beer like eight, nine o'clock tonight, and um, we have just uh, stuff to talk about, anyways. And so um, I, we were gonna we were gonna try to record this later, and then and I'm like, it, dude, this episode is due tomorrow. I'm I don't want to stay up till one o'clock in the morning editing. So I kicked him off. That's what you get. Will do, man. He knows who you are. I don't know what name he knows you by. I'm sure it's Ravenant, but... It's weird. All of us have like four names we go by because gaming. That's what I, I mean, it just cracks me up when we're, when we're doing, um, we're doing D and D and, uh, uh, and Jeff doesn't know whether to call me techno because that's my name in Twitch or Kai, cause that's my name on the program <laughs> or my character name <laughs> or my real name. Well, I would really, you going to stream it? I mean, I'd raid you. I think you're the only one in channel, so it wouldn't really make any difference to raid you, but still raiding is fun. Yeah. I was hoping for somebody to watch because, um, well, that that's true. Yeah, I am. Because uh, the second mic here makes editing easier. I was setting that up and it's like, why did I do the format of my show like that? <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, I was hoping to catch someone because um, I really, really, really would have preferred to play Fantasy Star tonight. But I need to do this and I need to edit and I need to make sure the kids are okay. So nobody's really online that I can raid. I mean, it'd just be two of us, but you know, still, I get bo I get brownie points for rating somebody, right? Well, anyways, I better I actually better get uh, get to editing. So thanks, thanks, dude. Thanks for joining us. Uh, less rambly than last week. It was just me this time, so. <laughs> fair. Totally fair. All right, dude. Well, you'll hear us tomorrow. Thanks, man. I'll talk to you later.